Okay, hi there. Welcome to the latest, the next, in our series looking at some of those key tricky diagrams that uh, students often uh, find quite hard. But if you get them right, you can get some fantastic marks for analysis. Let's spend a few minutes walking through the diagram that you might want to draw if you're asked to analyse profit satisficing. Now, satisficing occurs when there's a divorce or a separation between ownership and control in the business. So typically shareholders might want the business to maximise profit, whereas managers making the day-to-day -day decisions on pricing and advertising and marketing and investment, they make decisions that may take a firm away from the orthodox assumption of pure profit maximisation. Profit satisficing occurs when the owners of a business set a minimum acceptable level of achievement. It could be in terms of profits, in terms of pounds or dollars. It could also be a percentage return on the capital they've employed in the business. But having set that minimum acceptable level, this then gives the managers some freedom, some autonomy in how they price in different markets. And normally it involves setting lower prices, perhaps as a way of increasing revenue and market share. Now, when drawing the profit satisficing diagram, which we're going to go through in a few seconds, please remember, remember there's no unique price and output that you have to draw. So much depends on what the shareholders are demanding of managers and also critically, and there's a link to another topic, the degree to which a market is contestable and there is a genuine threat of hit and run entry. So here's our profit satisficing diagram. Here's our usual cost and revenue curves. They should by now be fairly familiar. If a firm aims to maximise profit, that's where marginal cost equals marginal revenue at output Q1. They can charge price P1 and the average cost, of course, is AC1. That's profit maximisation, where satisficing is choosing a different price in output, perhaps not making as much profit, but maybe gaining market share, for example. So that's the profit maximising price, but there's no unique profit satisficing price. I've chosen quite a low price and here it comes. There it is. That is a possible satisficing price. It's below P1. It involves a much higher output level. So it involves selling output Q2 at price P2. So they're getting a lower price per unit, but they're selling more. Actually, their revenue goes down a little bit because marginal revenue is already negative. You can still make a profit at output Q2. Let me draw in for you the average cost. There we go, AC2. So at output Q2, the price charge is P2, the cost per unit is AC2, so you're still making some profit. Let me shade that for you. There's the new profit compared with the old profit. Green for old, yellow for new, that is the, uh, the profit if you satisfy. Now that is... That yellow shaded area is must be lower, must be lower, surely, than the green area. It's just contrasting the two before and after. But the gain for the firm, for the shell, uh, for the managers, sorry, is that they get more market share. Uh, perhaps they get some kudos from working with a fast-growing business. And of course, in the long term, if they can keep and grow that market share and then keep it, that then allows them to move back to profit maximization in the future, perhaps with a more inelastic, uh, a more price inelastic demand curve. So there is your satisficing diagram. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It's a complex diagram, but A-levels are not easy. Satisficing is best defined as a decision-making process that strives for adequate, acceptable, rather than perfect results. And are we all agreed there is beauty in imperfection. And crucially, satisficing is linked to behavioural theories of the firm. So think about the pandemic. A lot of businesses that were profit-making, profit-maximising perhaps before the pandemic, many have actually may have altered or tweaked their business models away from pure profit max because the challenge has been to survive. Surviving in a fast-changing and challenging conditions, both at a micro and macro level, has for many firms become a paramount objective. So in many ways, some firms have moved away from pure profit maximization towards satisficing. In the next video, the tricky diagram showing price collusion in an oligopoly.